G'day, how you going? Are you an Apple C, you're an acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel here. Today's a milestone. I've reached 100,000 subscribers with the help of you people out there supporting my channel. Thank you very much, much appreciated. This painting is a milestone painting, so when I finish this painting, I will put a post in my group for the chance for someone to win it. So if you're not a member of my group, hit the link in the description below and become a member and find out how you can win this painting, okay? Uh, I'll get the sizes up there as well for the people who want to know the size of the darn thing. And um, get some colours going up the screen as well. That way you can jot them down if you want to paint along with this painting. Did you see the picture in the opening credits? It's all right, eh? Well, that's what I'm going to paint today. I'm going to show you how I paint it and show you that you can do it as well, okay? So, this painting will be one by one person and there will be two runner-ups that will receive a print of this painting, okay? And if you were so unlucky to miss out on that and you still want the painting, well, you can still buy prints of it, okay? So come on over here and let's get into this beautiful painting here on my palette. I'll use me. I'm going to use my palette today. Yeah, I need the palette. It's not going to have much of a sky in this, but anyway, get on over here. Now I've got a um, ledge. I want a bit of um, a mix of river, stream, creek, trees, shrubs, whatever. Bit of a sky. I want all those elements. Where I want to show you how you can paint and. The main thing I want to do in this painting is show you how to get some depth within there, okay? This might not make sense to you at the moment. That's why I say watch the video. Once you've watched the whole video, you know exactly what's going to happen. All right? So I'll, that's just my sky area here, but I'll get some sky colours going. I've put just a squirt of water there next to this craft paint. I've got no retarder in this today because it's not a big sky. And the sky is not going to be detailed with a heap of clouds. So I'll just, that's where my sky pretty much is. But I might want bits of the sky peeking through. Ooh, the bushes there, big piece of paint just went flying in towards my black curtains there. So why I'm putting this on there, this will just help the blue run across that dry, hungry canvas there. All right, so there's no retarder in that. That's just the craft paint. Now I've wiped my brush. Now pick your sky colour, whatever blue you want to use. I'm going to use cerulean blue because I bloody love it. I reckon it looks more real. Top, top of me sky. Get that area in there. I'm just pushing that into the canvas there. Now I'm going to crisscross it, get rid of all those bands and lines and whatever, just so as we get a beautiful... See how that craft white just let that blue move across the canvas there? Now I'll stroke that out. And why I'm not using retarder is because I want it to dry so I can put my bushes on there without any hindrance. I wonder if we can get a bit of cloudage in there, eh? I might just put something here which would be seen. So I've got some titanium white there out of the tube and just a little fan brush. It's going to be the sky there, so I'll put something maybe here. I'm just dabbing it with the corner of the brush, making some kind of cloud there. I'll turn it around. That'll do it. Let's see what that cloud turns out like, eh? I'm just going to use a medium blending brush, blend that into the sky. I'll get the bum on it because it's kind of over our head there. I've got a rag here to wipe any build up on my brush. And I want to tickle the tops of that. It's just a subtle cloud. Subtle.
And just to finish that subtle cloud off, I'll subtly put a little bit of, uh, what do you reckon, just a bit of yumminess there. Nothing too. What's the yumminess you say if it's your first time here? It's just vibrancy of the white. There we go. And we sit that down on top of that softly blended white, but leaving the vibrancy there. And it kind of gives the cloud some dimension, okay? Real simple and easy. See, I did that without retarder. I kind of um not quite happy um, with this bit here, so I'm just going to pick up some more and maybe come there. Yeah, that's it. Just something a bit different. That'll do. Beautiful little cloud. All right, I've dried that sky, and now I'm going to paint in this rock area. And I've cleaned my two-inch putter on a brush, and I'm going to have the black. I've got a little bit of water there, and the burn umber mixed together. When you're mixing paint, try not to mix the footprint too big, because what you're doing is you're virtually wearing your paint away, and then you realise, oh, I haven't got enough paint, I've got to mix up more. All right, I'm just going to roughly get this naturizingly mapped in there now that paint that i'm running over the sky color if it had retarder in it i'd be ripping the living buggery out of it um i think i'm going to have another rock there so i want this reasonably straight there because the water is going to start coming from there and water always comes from a level source it sits in a level way somewhere there Let's get all this on here. Nice dark colours, see? I need more water. Don't be shy to use water, as long as you've got enough paint with it. You don't want to water it down too much. And you watch the difference, how it'll transfer from the brush and move across your canvas. If you're using... Um, canvas paper it's probably not as hard as this stuff as the actual canvas cloth I'll go to about there I can put the water in later because every part of this that I do can and will be dried and um, we can add the extra highlights and brighter and lighter values in there all right, I've just wiped that brush. I haven't washed it. And I've got some burnt sienna here. Let's hope I don't get too dark in here. Yeah. See, because I want that rusty iron look within the water here. So let's get this there. And this is pretty much the water. I'll paint it to that brown bit and then I can blend them in a roundabout artistically way something like that yeah that's all right i like that look at that nice and artistic i'm just conditioning my brush now yeah get some of that on there we're going to have rustic colors in here as well when we dry it i love this brush you can do so much with the damn thing eh I just added that rock there. You need that there. You'll see why later on in the video. Now, I want my darkest green. So I've got forest green there. I'm going to be using forest green. I'm looking for a brush. I'll try and use this one. Now, I want that to be quite waterlizingly watery. Not too watery, though. I'm wetting the brush. What I'll do is I'll dab the brush in the water. Because I want this to be quite dark. And if I want, I can add a bit of black into this. But I want to add those shrubs over these rocks. And leave some of the sky sticking through. And they're going to be dark at the bottom as well. So leaving the sky sticking through. So I want to get all this coming, if anything, down from here 
and it, it, these bushes are kind of coming at us like that that's what I want to try and portray within this painting whether I can achieve that or not we'll find out now that's okay this might look a bit whateverish because we got a we're going to um, deerfoot some darkness into this now I'm looking for bits to get a bit darker there's plenty of sky sticking through but there doesn't have to be a bloody lot now I've dried this here so as I can put the depth the black I'm going to use a freckly brush this one's called an actual deer foot but this one why I want this you find a brush that's gonna create you know little freckly depth pockets within your painting there okay now I want to come from the actual ground and feather this in in bits and pieces like this okay because when we highlight over this this here is the magic if you don't have this within your shrubs and trees it kind of um, makes them look a bit um, weirdingly weird you know what I mean so we're gonna I'm just welding it from the rock and up into there bits and pieces where you got the sky poking through try and leave it I want a nice dark patch there get some here Now I've dried that. Now we're going to add the lighter elements within this rock face. I'm just going to use a flat. Now I've got that burnt sienna again and I'm going to use this and then other bits of this I will touch with some white as well. And just every everywhere here we want dark. I want this. I'm doing long movements okay. Long movements. Uh, where's my rock face about here so some of this is all like that just wing it just wing it okay now I will get pretty much the top of this which is about here somewhere there that's why I dried it see I'm rubbing all over that black there this is pretty much the top of the rock just scoot it in like so with a flat brush you could probably come down here now I'll get a roughly the waters there so it's going to have pretty much a ridge within it here as well so I'll get that ridge happening and I do want that rock here as well because that rock needs to have um, what would you say um, the, the darker value so I'm just going to map that whole rock in with that this is burnt sienna I think I said so I'm just lightly getting some scallops in there I'm just putting some other rocks here but they're going to be smashed with the actual water hitting them using up the pump just putting some rocks there because there's water here now I'm going to wash this brush and detail that darker color I'm just grabbing the burn umber and some white here it doesn't have to be fully mixed it can be marbly marbly is like when you see all the lines in it and I just want to gently yeah, get this detail the um, rock there and you can dry blend a lot of this as well so we're getting all scallops within it it's just an easy rock to paint and then we can get some black if we feel we've got too much of this in here and um, black some of it no I want some down here a lot of it down in here this, this 
this is another color. Some, yeah, I will add black into this. It's going to definitely need black. And when we highlight that rusty burnt sienna colour, it'll look beautiful. The black in here will look good. Uh, we probably, I'm not sure with this colour, we'll try and get some different stuff within the rock just there. Maybe something like that just to segregate those little bits buggers there, I'll darken them up because I want dark in there I have given that a dry now I'm getting the black that I got down here I just made sure there's enough water with it not too much and we want to get dark now so I want dark under this rock here I'll, I'll let the brush wear out a bit before I go there so I want some dark from the bush let's that off the brush a bit dark from the bush coming into the rock there just like that and we've got all sorts of steps and dark values here and in here now where's the main cliff of that probably here so I want to I want to try and get this bit deep within there so I want it nice and dark there and leave those bits of I might have to add them back if I lose too much of them I want nice dark value here in between these rocks I'm just loosely doing this keeping it all along I want the main middle bit deep and dark. Why is it when I paint the lawnmower man across the road always turns up? <laughs> now with this rock we could probably just get some bits of dark within that as well. I want it mainly dark where the water's going to be and some darkness in here as well where There we go. Now I'll highlight that rustic colour. All right, I've just got all the black where I feel I needed it, okay? Now we're going to get the rusty iron look on some of those rocks. And I'm just going to use the burnt sienna and some white. Just so as we can get a nice, there we go, iron look within our stones and rocks there. Now we don't want to go crazy with this. Is that rock there? We got bits of it filtering through those trees there because there's going to be, while I'm doing that, there's going to be some foliage tracing down over them. Not too much because if you make it too much, um, the foliage won't sit properly. And if you feel too much in one area, darken it back up. I'll get this rock a little bit. It's dark there, so I want some real brightness on this side of it. I'm just winging this rock and something like that and maybe uh, I don't know, something like that and then some of these are just very little but these are going to have water splashing on them Now I'm adding just a bit more white into that just to really accentuate some highlights here and there. Right. Oh yeah, look at that, see? All up in there. There 
they're going to be covered pretty much but they're there how are they looking that's okay i might get a little bit of light just hitting this somewhere scraggly i'm just kind of putting some edge rockery just coming off there there's something there and this water area will have some highlighty bits under there as well just so it's not all the one value it's dirty muddy water with all that iron mixed with the dirt all right now we're ready to detail these shrubs and we want them to sort of lace over here as well then we'll add some water I've got me forest green and the cad yellow light and we're going to get some of this and I'm also going to need some burnt umber and black to get that dead wood colour. Not the black, I mean burnt umber and yellow to get that dead wood colour. And we want to sit, look at that, sit it on top, beautiful. Now it's important, that black you put down, don't hide it all, leave a lot of it there. And then over this, we can really detail the, the rest of the painting. So you have some dark bits there, and I want to bring this one over the rock there like that, see? Got that one behind there, and that's how you bring some over there. Once we put the little fiddly leaves on these, it'll look beautiful. Get some of that, get rid of that yellow blob. I don't want bright yellow in there. I feel the yellow just ruins the realism of your greens. All right, I've dried that. Now I've cleaned my brush and I'm gonna get the yellow, cadmium yellow light and mix up some burnt umber inside there just to get my dead wood colour. And look at your work, and I want bits just here and there. So I want a fluttery bit there. Get some out here somewhere, nice and light. Nice. See how they're all freckly looking? You don't want a big blob. I've shown you before what you don't want. Get some of that over there. Okay, I've dried the canvas. Now I'm getting a more of a yellow green going on here and use a few brushes that can give you nice detailed foliage like that. Or oh, this might be a bit big. We'll see how we go with it. I'm just going to do like I did before, the corner of a fan brush. They work good. Look at that. I've just grabbed the deer foot to try and make it a bit quicker because it's painfully slow. It's for filming purposes. Now these ones here, I'm just going to have to distort those. There we go. So I'll just get this black back in here where I feel I need it and I can dribble. You can see these branches dribbling onto that rock. They need the black there. Now down here, I want to put a shrub as well, just here somewhere. So I'm going to put the thing there in black first. 
open here and there just there like that coming off the painting like that all right i dried there and i'm just getting some yellow green and then over those dark bits put your shrub Try and make the um, the shape of it. Now, what I want to do is put the surface of the water on, and then the water coming down the waterfall. So I've got some glaze, and I want to get a bit of white in that. Not too much, just glaze that white up a bit. And I want to just, where's my tape? There it is. I want to just find the surface of the water. Here we go. Okay, I'll get some of this titanium white. I just want to taint some of it with blue, just so it's not pure white. Okay, not too bluey white though, but just enough to look white on its own, yes. So I want to start, where's my leaner on a stick? I want to start some water coming down here. And it's jingling and jangling to that point there. Now this is just dribbling water. It's not a torrent of a waterfall. Okay, it's, it's, it's just cascading down over all these crevices within your rock. I'm going to stop to there for a minute. And then all this can come from behind here. You want air in between it. Coming there. How's that looking? That's looking okay, I suppose. Want it reasonably straight along there. What am I? water coming down here to that edge there okay got there <laughs> now it's coming down there's a ledge there so it's sort of going to come down there on a just sort of hit that ledge okay and it's dribbling down it's not a torrent all right <sighs> this one can I just want something different that you can do. See like that how it's dripping down with lots of droplets. It's going to this point here. Okay. To that point there. It's a bit of a detailed waterfall, but it's a bloody beauty. Try and keep them vertically straight if you can. Just like that. Bits are falling down everywhere. I'll get this end done so you'll know what I'm trying to achieve. Now here it's, it's spattering and spitting and hitting on its way down. So I'm gonna hit, instead of drawing a line down to the water surface there, I'm doing the splashing motions get up there a bit and give him a bit of a pull as well it's, it's hitting all this rock and just pulsating its way down to the bottom and then we can highlight some of this with really white water with really w real white yeah that's looking okay I'll detail that later and now the same with this one and here it's hitting all there there's the, there's the actual creek water surface there that it's hitting in. And this one here as well. Splashing all over the place, there's rocks there. It's just a different waterfall. Now down the bottom there, it's all this way, horizontal, rippled 
leaving some darks in between there. I'm very concentrated where all the water's been dropping. And then our whites can highlight this. All right, moving right along, because there's all, better get it in there, there's all bodies of water here, deep behind there, you can't see as well. And they are kind of over that rock, over that rock. Oh yeah, that rock's got a lot of water just billowing over it. And so is this here. Now I'm gonna use the brush coming downwards on its edge and get some water. Try and keep your brush straight. Just smash in there. Now these rocks are where it's hitting. It's all hitting them. Look at that. Just water's just hitting them. Like so. And then spurting out into the actual river bit here with some agitation. So keep these in cahoots with the horizon line, these ones here. Get them straight. And then all this is just you got all this getting agitated and tossed around, hitting the rock there. Get it right on that rock and then just to the side there, nothing to it. Bang, a lot of water coming down, agitating into the swamp again here. Some maybe hitting some of this rock here. This has got to have white highlighting it. Right now I'm just getting the white and this will put the movement so to speak in the water okay just like that and you'll be able to see how this affects your painting Suppose it adds dimension to your water. Oh, get this really highlighted up there and down there. See that bluey white colour has added the depth for the water. Like we put the brown and the black for the depth of the rocks. Same principle for the water. Okay, just to finish it off. I'm grabbing the yellow mixed with the green, more yellowy color, but it's still green, because I want that, I'm using the, this now to give me those um, fern type, conifer type foliage that I'm after. So we want bits coming from within and coming out at us laying over that next one, but leaving the dark as well in its appropriate spot. Don't see, I think I've stamped it too much there, but it'll be all right. I'm kind of doing sweeping, sort of like the guys do with their um, American Everglade trees, kind of doing that sort of sweeping motion.
better not forget about this little sucker. I don't know what sort of tree it is, but it's some kind of creek, swamp, shrub type of thing. This rounded edges, I'm just trying to scoop them out in that kind of fashion as well. Because that is the shape I'm looking for. I'm just going to put some dead colours with this one. It's too, I don't know, too green. I'm just putting back some of the dead. Hopefully I don't destroy it. Okay, where's my tape? I'm working an autograph down here somewhere. It's got to be right over this rock, damn it. I'll just do it here. It's there. It's subtle, but it's there. Check out the links in my description below. Share, like, and subscribe to my channel here. You'll learn a lot. Cost you nothing to watch them. I've got through over 340 tutorials here for beginners and all sorts. All right, let's whack a frame on this and see how she looks. Ah, there we go. That's not too shabby, eh? Bit of a waterfall in a creek and some heavy, dense foliage. Just remember, you can do that. All right, and like I said, check out the links in the description below. All my paintings are for sale, and if they're already sold, the prints are available as well. Uh, message me on Facebook. Payments are done through PayPal. All the appropriate links are down below the description there. And if you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.